Well, the story you're about to hear may be the most bizarre and unbelievable story you've ever heard, but it's 100% true. This is a story about how cheap I really am, and how, well, now I'm rich. A long time ago, I was in high school. I did my best in all the shops so that I could get a scholarship and get a free education as a machinist. Well, that happened, and I became a machinist with my free education and made lots of money. I saved lots of money and lived with my parents until I was 23 years old and my father kicked me out because he's an asshole. But by then I had saved enough money to put a down payment on my home and buy my first home in a nice neighborhood where I'm still living. And I also had enough money left over for down payment on my farm, which I bought three years later. I already had my car paid for. The only thing I needed was a wife. Well, it didn't take a single guy with a nice home and a nice car long to get a wife. So I had one of those within a year and a kid on the way. But when I bought this farm, it was just a, just a cow field. It was green grass everywhere. There was no driveway. I wish there was no wind. There was nothing. There was just a gate. No hydro, no water, no driveway. There was the forest at the back and the gravel pit over those hills that I fell in love with. Well, because I was cheap, the ch piece of land with nothing on it was certainly cheaper than a piece of land that was already done up. So, I bought myself an old bulldozer and fixed it up because I was too cheap to pay someone else to help me out and make some driveways. An old backhoe tractor, dig holes, scoop gravel. An old 427 dump truck. And also a really old Dallas Chalmers 1963 front end loader to pull out trees, move stumps, and pick up the big rocks that were in the way. Of course, one day my loader broke down and the motor needed a head gasket because it used to be diesel. So I was too cheap to fix it. So I had a good uh, handy 305. V8 Monte Carlo engine laying around at 30,000 kilometers, so I put that in. It didn't cost anything. Oh, I actually love it more now. It works great. Since my farm is 30 kilometers north of where I live, which is 20 miles, I was so cheap it used to bug me how much gas it cost to go there and back whenever I went there. I go there often. So I bought a $100 vehicle, this 1990 minivan, with a bad motor. And I did what no one else in North America has done before. I converted it to be diesel front wheel drive, turbo, turbo, five speed. Well, now I have the world's most fuel efficient van that gets 57 miles per gallon. And I'm laughing, but it gets better than that. I'm even cheaper. Well, since part of my business is fixing furnaces, which is another trade I taught myself, People know that I have this van, and they know that I burn alternative fuels, oils, diesel, heating oil, whatever. So when someone gets their furnace converted to natural gas from more expensive heating oil, they call me and I come and pump out their oil for free, remove their tank, and put the oil in these 45 gallon tanks, run it in my diesel van, so I drive for free. Couldn't, couldn't laugh about that. And there's a couple of those uh, oil tanks that I recovered. To drive for free, you have to maintain your vehicle for free. So, I accept free donations. So, I can use all their parts for free to fix my vehicles. Free tires, radiators, batteries, you know, wiper blades, all those expendable parts, brakes, whatever, anything I need, I got it for free. So over the years, I started amassing a lot of free stuff. These are free air conditioners that I fix up, buy and sell. Well, I don't really buy them, I mean I sell them. Along with major appliances. So then I started to get like too many free cars. Of course, that's always been my problem. So I had to create an infrastructure to put all this free stuff so I could live my El Cheapo lifestyle. So I actually had to buy this farm just to uh, put my stuff on. I actually bought the farm with money I made from garbage picking. 
That's the truth. I now have an $850,000 property that I bought from picking garbage with that money. I turned garbage into gold. It's real. Well, this property had no water supply, no well. There is a pipe at the highway, but I didn't want to pay money to drill a well, have water when I can just bring up a little bit to drink from home. So I got a free old scrap propane tank. I modified it. This is a water input pipe. This is a water output pipe. And this is an air pipe where air goes in. And this is the excess water flow and air output pipe when I'm filling it. So if I want to get some water, shut off the input and output valves, open these up, and you can hear the air rushing in. And that equals a great water supply. Just don't drink it, it's got bird shit in it, and who knows what else. When you want to refill it again, you exhaust the compressed air that's in the tank by opening the air valve. Open the input valve. And it automatically self-fills itself when I'm not here, even by dew if it doesn't rain. And it never can overfill because it goes out that pipe and just pours on the ground outside. Keeps my grass watered for free. Outside of my building you can see the eave trough. It runs down to a piece of black pipe. Then it goes to the wall, to the concrete wall, and that feeds my propane can for water. Security doors would have been too expensive for this building. So I made my own. They're made out of concrete. Each one weighs 700 pounds. But they have custom made invisible hinges. And 700 pounds just floats like butter. Very secure. And a custom locking mechanism too. And when I want to warm my ass in the winter time, I made a free wood stove. It's six feet high. That's designed so that when you come in from snowmobiling, you can stand beside it and warm up your whole body, but it also makes it very efficient. The heat radiating from three barrels doesn't waste any heat. The smoke going out the chimney is almost cold by the time it goes outside. So, free heat. And of course, I use my free wood that I have at the back of the farm. It's already dead and dry because of the Dutch elm and different diseases in my hickory trees that kills them for me. That sucks, but anyways, we keep warm. I didn't want to spend any money on a staircase or all the metal it takes to build one. So I found a free scrap pipe, welded some plates to it, added some pieces of wood, and made a funky looking uh, custom staircase with a handrail made out of some exhaust system I found that hadn't been bent yet. Now to cut all my trails so we can go riding because the grass gets kind of long, I got a free lawn tractor with a blown up motor, a John Deere, and I modified it and put a 13 horsepower motor in it that wasn't made for it. I got my free snowmobile for riding and then I edit my farm videos on my garbage pick Pentium 4 computer that I put together with some other parts. Well, with all this free stuff and space out here, I started sharing it with my friends. And so they have some of their toys here too. But this summer, since I'm so cheap, I went to an auction sale for repossessions and I bought myself my first quad. I used to be a bike lover, but now I like quads too. Suzuki 400. Got it for half of the retail price, being a repo. Mm, I love saving money, because I'm cheap. I buy myself buck a bottle beer. Well, that's cheap for Canada, because you can't buy cheaper than buck a bottle. 